This video is sponsored by Blinkist. When it comes to electric vehicles, the most popular question by far is, how long can it go on a single charge? When I was saving money for my Tesla Model 3 before it was even revealed, I told myself I would only go through with the purchase if the Model 3 had at least 300 miles of range. Well, Tesla eventually announced that it would have 310 miles of range, so that's when it solidified my decision to buy it. And since owning my Model 3, I've always told people who are considering a Tesla or any EV that they should get the vehicle with the most range that fits within their budget. Basically, get the longest range possible. And I've always praised the long range Model 3 for having the best combination of range and energy efficiency out of any electric vehicle ever made. I've also recommended that people buy the long range non-performance versions of the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y because if you buy the performance versions, you're paying more money for less range, which is counterintuitive even though you are getting the quicker performance and a few other upgrades. Now, if you have the budget and you want the performance, by all means, get it you won't be disappointed but i do believe the long range non-performance versions are quick enough for 99 percent of people and it's not worth spending the extra money just to lose out on some extra range however tesla's battery optimization is continually improving so the difference in range is pretty small these days Currently, the long range Model Y only has 23 more miles of range compared to the performance Model Y. So is it really that big of a deal to have 20 extra miles of range? Well, that's what we're going to find out in this video today. If you're new here, David is a buddy of mine who got a performance Model Y last year, and we thought it would be interesting to take my 2018 long range Model 3 and his 2020 performance Model Y on the same road trip from Louisville, Kentucky to Asheville, North Carolina to see just how much of a difference the energy efficiency and range estimates are and if they really matter in the grand scheme of things. Now we wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison because there are so many factors that affect estimated range in an electric vehicle, including the size, weight, and aerodynamics of the vehicle itself, the size of the wheels, tire pressure, the amount of load inside the vehicle, elevation, temperature, precipitation, speed, the use of AC and heater, and of course, the age and lifetime cycles of the battery. But before we get into the trip, you should know a few things. First, David's 2020 Performance Model Y had an estimated range of 280 miles with the 21-inch wheels, but he replaced those with smaller 20-inch wheels, which should put his estimated range closer to 300 miles. And my Model 3 is over two years old with 75,000 miles on it, and it currently has an estimated range of around 300 miles, so we both have similar estimated range. We both fully charged our cars and departed with approximately 300 miles of range on both batteries. However, even though we both have around 300 miles of range, the Model 3 and Model Y have a different driving efficiency, which is what we really wanted to keep track of on this trip. Now, Tesla's driving efficiency is tracked as watt hours per mile, and all Teslas track this on the touchscreen. We both reset our trip meter before we left in order to keep track of our watt hours per mile. If you're confused about watt hours per mile, just think of miles per gallon on a gas car. In fact, fueleconomy.gov lists my 2018 long range Model 3 efficiency as 260 watt hours per mile, and David's 2020 performance Model Y is listed at 280 watt hours per mile. Let's see what we really get on this 750 mile round trip. Okay, this is the first supercharger stop on the trip to Asheville, North Carolina from Louisville, Kentucky, Model 3 versus Model Y range test. I'm doing really well in the Model 3. I've added about 85 miles here at the supercharger. My watt hours per mile so far on the Model 3 has been 242. The weather has been perfect. And let's go see what David's watt hours per mile has been so far. David's performance Model Y. We're gonna take a little progress report. Two and a half hours, I think it's like 150 miles we've traveled so far. 307 which is it's below my average for sure i try to get around 300 on road trips we had the ac pumping i didn't have my ac on at all until like the very last like 10 minutes maybe so yeah, i guess that's when ours turned on pretty even comparison we took turns back and forth between like leading and following we tried to make it even as far as like that goes but he tried to cheat at first he, <laughs> he was driving behind me and using my my draft <laughs> and I, I called him out so I knew you were going to call that, call me out on that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you can just lead the way the whole time. <laughs> so we kind of switched back and forth uh, halfway. But we went like five miles an hour above the speed limit pretty much the whole time, 75 miles an hour. So yeah, with my car, it's saying that I could just charge here and then make it to Asheville. And with the Model Y, it's telling us that we need to stop at Knoxville for like 
I don't know, charge another 15 minutes or so. Yeah. A better route planner, it said you could get there, but you, you'd be here it? for a while and you, you'd get there for like zero percent. <laughs> it was like 60 mile per hour speed limit, which we can't, you can't really do that in a Tesla. I mean, especially not in a performance model Y. I mean, no, he has to flex a little bit <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> yeah, so a better route planner is a great app to have for all Tesla owners. If you don't have that, download that now. And it, basically, you can customize it and tell it like what car, what specific Tesla model you have, what the charging percent that you're leaving at, and what you want to arrive at. It's basically kind of like a more sophisticated version of the onboard Tesla navigation system. All right, so we're only about 40 miles into the trip, and full self-driving, aka Elon, has already saved Andy's life literally right in front of us there was a truck coming over and the truck almost cut him off and crushed his model 3 and uh full self-driving took over and saved his life mostly saved jamie's life because the truck would have hit her first let's see we're 104 miles out from the first charger and we got 81 percent battery so we're looking good for now all right, so we are at the next supercharger stop, and this is where having a non-performance Tesla pays off because with my Model 3, if I was by myself, I would have only had to charge at the uh, London supercharger that we just left from. I would have only had to charge once along the way from Louisville to Asheville, but with the performance Model Y, we had to make an, one more additional supercharger stop in Knoxville. The problem is Knoxville supercharger is about 30 minutes off of the route. So you're losing at least one hour just going to the supercharger. It's getting 232 watt hours per mile average on the trip so far after 260 miles, which is awesome. David's Model Y is averaging about 296 watt hours per mile. And just based off of that higher watt hours per mile usage, it's basically adding an hour and a half to the trip. That is very important. And that's why I've always said having a non-performance Tesla, I've always preferred to having the most efficient Tesla and I love having the most efficient Tesla. It pays off for, for trips like this because just not having to stop at that one supercharger can save a lot of time on a trip. But having said that, it was also good to see that the Model Y performance is getting, is averaging less than 300 watt hours per mile, which is good because his normal is, I think above 300. So the weather has been great so far. So that's also helped with the good efficiency for both cars. So we'll see how it is on the way back. The trip there was a total of 393 miles and my Model 3 used 93 kilowatt hours while David's Model Y used 121 kilowatt hours. Now the main reason for the big difference in energy was because of the elevation. We drove a lot of curvy uphill roads when we reached North Carolina so the bigger and heavier Model Y used more energy to travel on an incline. So one of the best things about driving an electric vehicle whether it's a performance Model Y right here or non-performance Model 3 is that you can charge at your destination, most likely for free. So here at our Airbnb, this is the parking garage. It has a two stall charger here for any EV. It's a charge point uh, stall. David's been charging. I'm about to plug up and just charge a little bit before we leave. So that has been awesome is that we've been able to charge for free uh, while we're staying here for a couple days. And we're gonna be able to leave out with a full charge. Now what's also cool about the return trip is that David's Model Y was much more efficient than the trip there, so he didn't need to charge at Knoxville on the way back. He left about 15 minutes earlier than I did and basically drove the speed limit, and since he was traveling downhill for the first part, he was able to conserve his battery and we both only charged once on the way back home. I drove seven miles more than him on the way back because I stopped to get a spicy Sammy, but I ended up using more energy on the way back than I did on the way there, mostly because I traveled at faster speeds on the way back. So faster speeds use more energy. Higher incline uses more energy. The bigger and heavier the weight of the vehicle is uses more energy. You get the point. Now the awesome part for both of us was only one charging stop on the way back. And if you're curious about supercharger speeds and costs, if I were traveling in my Model 3 alone, it would have been a 12 hour total round trip, about 11 hours driving and two 30 minute charging stops. The single 30 minute charging stop on the way back cost $9.88 in my Model 3, which added 175 miles of range. David charged for about 40 minutes, which was about 10 more minutes than I did, and regained about 200 miles, and that cost $12.42. So a 750 mile round trip in my Model 3 would have only cost about $20 in supercharging. 
Now for the total round trip, my Model 3 used 191 kilowatt hours to travel 765 miles, which resulted in an average of 249 watt hours per mile. And David's Model Y used 226 kilowatt hours to travel 751 miles, which resulted in an average of 300 watt hours per mile. That's a difference of 50 watt hours per mile, which means the Performance Model Y uses about five more kilowatt hours every 100 miles compared to my Model 3. That's about a 15 kilowatt hour difference per full battery charge, which equates to about 20% of the battery pack. And as we saw during the trip there, the 20% difference could save you from having to add an additional charging stop, which saves a lot of time over the life of the vehicle. Now, speaking of saving time, today's sponsor, Blinkist, does just that by bringing you knowledge from top nonfiction books and podcasts so you can learn anytime, anywhere. Blinkist condenses nonfiction books into simple summaries that provide you with the best insights and takeaways. Now, since I'm constantly going from one YouTube video to the next, it's hard for me to find time to actually sit down and read long books, but most nonfiction books like business or self-help books contain a lot of unnecessary filler. With Blinkist, you can get the key ideas in just 15 minutes of listening or reading. I love actionable books about building better habits, so being able to open up Blinkist and get the main takeaways from some of the most helpful books, such as The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and Atomic Habits by James Clear, it's a game changer. I'm able to save time and money by not having to go through the entire books. If you're like me and you want to become a better, smarter person in a shorter amount of time, the first 100 people to visit Blinkist.com slash Andy Sly will get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. And the seven-day trial is completely free and you can cancel at any time during that period. Click the link below to get started today. I hope you enjoyed this road trip range test of the Model 3 and Model Y. Do you prefer performance or range? Let me know in the comments below. My name is Andy. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more Tesla and tech videos in the future. And I'll talk to you in the next one.